All right, let's pray. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for, uh, for being here with us. Thank you that you accept our praise. Um, we pray, God, that uh, we would hear from you now. Pray for, uh, pray for your words to come out of my mouth, that uh, you would be remembered and I would be forgotten. We love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, have a seat, guys. Glad you made it. Glad you're here. Sunday afternoons can be difficult. But take it from me, Sunday mornings are harder. Um, I've worked in a church for 13 years, and it was uh, many a Sunday morning were the uh, Star Wars epic battle scenes with lava and bile and all kinds of things. And so it's going to be hard. When you prioritize Jesus, it's just going to be hard. So thanks for making it. Um, it's your first time here. So glad you're here. Glad you made it, buddy. Glad you're here. All right. Um, so we're studying the book of Romans, and the reason we went to Romans is is in these times of uncertainty, we need the certainty of the gospel to drive our lives. We don't want to be driven by fear or circumstances or frustration or anger, anything other than the gospel. So we open the book of Romans, which gives the believers the most thorough explanation of the gospel in all of Scripture, is this book of Romans. And so we want to read Romans and have a gospel-driven life. We are on chapter 14, so to kind of catch everybody up as quickly as we can, um, the first nine chapters is all these hard truths of the Bible. We're, we're not going to go through all of those. If you want it, snap a picture of it. Trust me, they're in there. Each chapter seems to have one difficult truth after the next, after the next. None of these things being easy, but if we're going to believe the gospel, we have to take the gospel warnings that come with the gospel good news. And so those are all, they're in there. These first nine chapters seems to set this foundation that, that, that we believe these things. And then the last couple chapters, starting chapter 10, is uh, foundational practices. So if you believe 1 through 9, we do 10 through 16. These are just the things we do. And I have to be real clear on this part because um, in our heads we get it backwards sometimes. This isn't things you do so that God will be happy with you, um, so that you can get to heaven. No, no, no. Because you've been forgiven, because you've come to Jesus... We do these things. Does that make sense? There's a big difference. It's, it's cart than horse, not the other way around. We want to make sure people understand these things don't get you to heaven. Doing these things, you cannot earn a spot in heaven. No, no, no. Jesus is the only way to heaven. And because we've come to him, we do these things. And so, again, snap a picture. They're in there. Um, speak and send the gospel out. If you love and follow Jesus, you have to share the gospel. Jesus said it. Paul said it here too. Um, you're going to glorify God. You're going to have a transformed life, a worship life. Um, and then last week, you're going to put on Christ and take off sin. Today, we're going to be in 14 through 23. I'm sorry, chapter 14, 13 through 23 is where we're going to be. But before we did, um, before we get into that, I was, uh, man, as I was, I was doing my prep, I just, I just got to thinking. 2020, we, we tend to think in memes. I think I was talking to to Jim. He's like a meme creator now. Jen is my meme dealer. Like I'm on her Facebook stuff just catching all of these funny things they're putting on. But we think in these snapshot pictures nowadays. That's how we think. And so I went ahead and memed judgment because this, this chapter is talking about being judgmental. And so I thought, well, let's see what's out there. So first you have this, this lady and she posted this. She posted, it's more about practicing what you preach. The Bible says God, only God can judge, yet Christians are extremely judgmental. Things like that are why people don't like religion. So let's take this apart piece by piece. The first thing says it's more about practicing what you preach. I think she means life. Life is more about practicing what you preach, and, and we hate hypocrisy. It, being a hypocrite is playing this part. You're one way in people's face, and then another way uh, when they're not around. Or you say do this, or but you don't do it yourself or you say, don't do this and you do it, you know? And so, so I get hating hypocrisy, uh, but then this next sentence, she says, the Bible says only God can judge. I need to break this apart. This is going to disappoint some people, but Tupac said that, not Jesus, not the Bible. Tupac said only God can judge. Um, the Bible actually teaches that Christians, we should be calling each other out. We should be saying, hey, hey, you've, you're a Christian. That means a little Christ, and you have these things you're doing that aren't Christ-like. Um, and so, in fact, uh, James 5.20 says, Whoever turns a sinner from error will save them from death and cover a multitude of sin. 
So I'm not saying we should go around and, 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 and say that's a sin and that's a sin. No one likes the sin police, all right? But at the same time, we have to call sin, sin. We have to, we have to use judgment, right? Um, we do that all day long, every day. We have to use our judgment. And uh, the best way to, to know whether something's right or wrong is, is this book. Um, not, not Tupac, sorry. Uh, had to be clear on that. Um, the Bible teaches that God is the final judge. Not the only one who judges. He's the final judge. Kind of like you're playing a video game. you got all these little bosses and then the final boss at the end, you know. Um, he will judge at the end. And so uh, let's, let's do the next meme. The next meme, um, people be like, only God can judge. I'd be like, that should scare you, right? Um, if, if God is going to judge us, that should scare us. Um, in fact, um, the Romans, I think it was chapter 3, he talks about real clearly God, God is going to judge. And, and there should be, even for the Jesus follower, a, a little bit of, of hair standing up or did I forget my keys? You know that feeling? You know that feeling? Did I walk out without my wallet? Forget my keys? Judgment's coming. There should be that moment of, am I good for that or not? You know? Um, so let me, let me help clarify some of that because this idea can be overly scary and petrifying. And so, so judgment, this is a day where sometime after we're dead, God is going to judge us. That part is true. Tupac got that right. God will be the final judge in our lives. Um, and, and here's the thing. If you know and love and follow Jesus, if, if you've put your faith in him, that's the checking for your keys. Like, oh, I've got my keys. <laughs> you, you're fine. You keep going. Because what happens when we put our faith in Jesus, it's this two simultaneous thing happens. On one hand, he takes away our sin. And on the other hand, he gives us his righteousness and his perfection. It happens at the same time. It's, it's this great exchange of, of give me that sin, take my perfection. It happens all at the same time. And so we can stand before God in judgment if that has happened for you and know, oh, I'm good. And then here's the beautiful thing. All the good things we've done, God judges those for reward because he has, because we have our sin taken care of. Uh, someone who hasn't come to Jesus, they step in that courtroom in a whole different way. All right. So it looks like, let's just, uh, let's just call out a nasty sin we all know is, is, is awful. So let's just say you eat babies, okay? If someone walks into the courtroom who, who eats babies, right? I just, I just thought I'd go, go big, right? Might as well, right? So, so what, if, what if they eat babies, but they're also the nicest person in the world? They're also, uh, they give to charities, they do all these great things, and the list is longer than their arm. And the one thing they do is... Eat babies. We, that's right. All right. Thank you. My boys are all over. So, hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We can't get to those nice things because judgment has to happen. We can't. Those good things are not that good. They're stained by that awful sin, right? So, so the same way, whatever sin we have, if you walk into God's courtroom on judgment day and you've got any sin on you, it's more offensive. Than, it's as offensive as that because, because we haven't had our sin dealt with. We can't be rewarded for the good things. It doesn't matter how good we are if we've got that kind of thing on us. So, yeah, that should scare us. The next thing, this is a Princess Bride for those, uh, those, those 80s kids like me. Yeah, you keep saying only God can judge. I do not think you know what that means. Um, and so uh, what's that guy's name? Emilio Montoya? You killed my father, prepare to die, right? <laughs> we always want to pray not for God's judgment, for that grace. We want to have a grace first mentality, especially when talking to us. This has this feeling of, of only God can judge me and I'm, I'm fine. Uh, only God can judge me. Ah, again, I don't think you know what that means because that day comes, it should be a little more unsettling for folks. Um, this one's pretty funny. Um, when somebody says only God can judge me, what they really mean is I know it's wrong and I still don't care. Uh, that's what I've run into. I don't know about you guys, but, but if I'm walking in and someone is, usually it happens in the moment, this is their sin, whatever it is, you name it, uh, and, and, and I walk into the room and, and I get the only God can judge me. What they really mean is this right here. I know it's wrong, but this is how I am. This is what I'm going to do. And then finally, everyone saying only God can judge me forgets that one day he will. Um, so this chapter is going to talk a lot about judgment. What it's not talking about is these things that are clear. So the Ten Commandments, they were literally written in stone. These things that are in stone, they are permanent. We, 
We need to be able to say right is right and wrong is wrong. That's what we need to be able to say um, and, uh, and, and, and should. I like this psalm. This one's, uh, this one's pretty, uh, I love it. I don't know. It's, com- it's comforting to me. 58, psalm 58 says, do you rulers indeed speak justly? Do you judge people with equity? No. In your heart you devise injustice. In your hands you mete out violence on earth. Even from birth the wicked go astray. From their womb they are wayward spreading lies. Their venom is like the venom of a snake, like that a cobra that has stopped its ears, that will not heed the tune of the charmer, however skillful, skillful their enchanter may be. Break their teeth in their mouths, O God. Tear out their fangs of those lions. All right. So this is a psalm. This is a, a prayer uh, that this the psalmist has wrote. And he said, man, bad things are happening. So he has judged, right? He has used judgment to say, that's evil. That's evil. Those things are evil. I'm seeing all this evil. So he's calling it out. And we can do that as, as believers. We, we should do that. In fact, not doing that kind of makes us part of doing it. We, we, we need to be able to speak up. Um, we're not supposed to allow bad things to happen. We should stand up. Um, call sin what it is. Sin. Um, and then James 5.20 says, Remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from error of their way will save them from death and cover a multitude of sins. It's okay to call sin what it is, sin. We don't want to be the sin police and point it out, um, but the things the Bible is very clear on, we need to remain clear on. The things it's gray on, we're going to be gray on. The things that are not locked in. uh, Verse 1 in this chapter says, except the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputed matters. What we're talking about today is going to be these disputed Matters. Remember, this letter was written to the church in Rome that had two different kinds of believers in there. They were Jewish followers of Jesus and non-Jewish or Gentile followers of Jesus. The Jewish guys were used to all of these rules. Eat this, don't eat that, do these rituals, do these things. And, and suddenly, they're under Jesus. And they don't have to not eat that. But for some reason, eating bacon still feels dirty to them. And Paul's saying over and over, listen, if it feels dirty, don't eat it. All right? But also, don't knock them for eating bacon. Mike Watt's going to eat bacon every time he can, you know? Um, and so that's where we're going in this chapter. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's just get into it. We'll start in uh, chapter 14, verse 13. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling blocks or obstacles in the way of a brother or sister. Um, so this one comes to this idea of a personal conviction. Let me tell you all just, a, just an example for me. When I was about, I don't know, 22, 23, 24, so almost like 20 years ago, uh, I, was, I was having my quiet time. That's the time where I sit down, I read my Bible. That's where God talks to me, and I pray. I talk to him. We have this conversation. Um, and oftentimes, I, I've learned this practice of asking questions uh, and, and seeing what God says to those questions. I'm going to ask questions, then I'm going to shut up. You know, I'm going to ask questions, then I'm going to shut up and see. Um, sometimes... Sometimes my own imagination answers, but sometimes more clearly I, I feel like, man, that really was Jesus talking to me. Um, anyways, I'm reading the book of Revelations, and you guys got to know I love fantasy. I love Superman. I love cartoons. Um, I, love, I love dragons. Dragons were a huge part of my childhood growing up. They were just, just cool. I mean, that's just cool, right? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm reading the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation says, the dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. And I realized real quick, the snake, the serpent in Genesis is the dragon in Revelation. And I got like some dragon stuff, shirts, clothing, rings, whatever. And, and I, I felt like, like is, it, is it wrong, God, for me to wear this stuff? Uh, and, and I didn't get an answer, yes or no, but, but basically I felt the sense of, of well, Whose team are you declaring when you wear that, Mike? And I was like, oh, man, I don't want to declare the Dragons team. I want Jesus' team. And so it became a personal conviction of mine. Jesus challenged me to dump my Dragon stuff. Um, and by the way, this is like year 2020, so emo was way in, right? Um, and so I jumped, or 2002, I, I threw away my Dragon stuff, and, and I looked to, to not have Dragon stuff. That was a personal conviction between me and Jesus. Now, Here's what happens. We do. We take this personal conviction and we say, that's for everybody now. The Bible didn't say that, right? That's what Jesus challenged me on. That was a personal conviction. Um, and it, it starts in a good place, my personal time with Jesus. And it, 
if we push it that way, it lands in this legalistic place of making things that are not in stone and adding them to the commandments. Does that make sense? And so we're not, we're not to do that. We are to have personal conviction, so let me encourage you. Have that time with Jesus. Ask him questions. Treat it like a relationship. Listen to him. Talk to him. But, but sometimes he's going to tell you something that's not for your neighbor. That's, that's for you, um, and you need to hang on to that. Um, so the application there is uh, gospel faith produces high regard for the good of others. Pushing my personal convictions on others is not putting them first. Let's keep going. 14 through 17. I'm convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean of itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person, it is unclean. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy someone for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what you know to be good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is a matter of eating and drinking, or is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So there's a lot there. Let me break that down. Um, the, the first part is, uh, is talking about uh, being, being fully convinced. So being fully convinced on disputable matters. We talk a lot, well, we don't talk a lot about, but, but this works itself out for us in talking of, of alcohol, drinking alcohol. And people, a lot, a lot of people are saying, they're going to say right away, well, that's wrong. Well, it's not. Jesus drank alcohol. You know that, right? He drank mostly wine, maybe some water here and there when it was clean, but mostly wine. And so there's a way to drink alcohol and not sin. I know that because Jesus was sinless. And so how about I try it his way? Um, alcohol, smoking, dancing, tattoos, and, and, and I'll say this. I, like Paul, on these disputable matters, most of these that come up, I'm fully convinced. I've got, I've got something that I think, all right? Um, especially about tattoos, right? Um, but, but, but I'm fully convinced. And, but right now in 2020, um, there's something going on um, it, with, with masks, all right? So let's, let's try to work this out in 2020, see how this works, all right? Um, there are churches right now that are requiring people, if you want to come here, you got to social distance and you got to wear a mask. Um, and, and these people are saying, the churches are saying basically, for the weaker vessel, case because someone might be sick, you don't want to be responsible for getting them sick, so you, you should wear the mask for the weaker vessel. Okay, that's, that's one stance. The other stance is, man, man, when, when I come into this place, like, and I see all these people wearing masks, it creates great anxiety in me and, and great fear. And there's no way I can worship God with, with all of this fear and anxiety. And so for, for that weaker vessel, we should not wear a mask. Does that make sense? And so the problem comes when we treat the weaker vessel as king of our worship. Okay? Jesus is the king of our, week, of our worship not the weaker vessel. And so we're going to look to Jesus. Here, just let me be clear, the state of Texas does not require us to, to wear a mask. And, uh, and if it did, we might have a problem. But, but we are practicing freedom. If you're not convinced, put a mask on. That's okay. If you, if, if, if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't, cool, don't. We're not going to force our freedoms on that. Um, and a lot, a lot of times, what I'm, the pushback I'm getting is, man, really... You, these weaker vessels, they, they, they should be more important in, in, in worship. And I'm, I'm going to say it again, that we're not going to worship weaker vessels during our worship time. We're going to worship Jesus. He is king of our worship. Um, and so let's walk this out. If weaker vessel is king, what does that look like? Well, have, has anyone ever heard of aqua genetic urticaria? Anybody? I'd look it up. Anybody know what that is? Uh, this is a water allergy. These are people who are allergic to water. It's a real thing. I do not recommend you Google pictures. All right, it's blisters. It's bad. Um, it, it's it, sometimes it just looks like a light rash, and other times it's it's really really bad. These people they have uh, they're allergic, literally allergic to water. So when they sweat, they hurt themselves. Um, so they have to have air blowing and cooling. And 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 so we have this thing called baptism. If you're going to believe in Jesus and follow Jesus, you've got to get baptized. That means you've got to go in the water and you've got to go under the water. And so for the weaker vessel, we should, if the weaker vessel is king, we should then quit doing water baptisms. 
But they're not king. Jesus is king. Um, I will say this. Um, we, we, we will make considerations. We want to take care of individuals as best we can. Uh, I, I had to show this clip. I really like this, what this little boy is doing. What we would do is probably something similar to this. Look at this little guy. He's doing He's trying to learn, and so he's, he's scooping that knowledge up and putting it on himself. Now, I, I need to learn this page, too. Let me scoop that up and pour it on me. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm learning all this stuff, right? Uh, so we would do something. If someone came in here and was like, man, I love and follow Jesus. I want to get baptized now. Me and the elders, we'd get together, and we'd probably do something with, I don't know, smoke and, and blue light and, 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 and dunk them like that kid was pouring water on himself. But here's what we wouldn't do. We, we would consider them and care for them so they can be obedient to baptism. But we wouldn't force everybody to have a smoke baptism anymore. Does that make sense? And so the mask falls in that same category of may, maybe you just can't worship with a mask, and so we're not going to make you wear a mask. And, and if you're not comfortable with around people who wear masks, then don't, don't wear a mask, that, that sort of thing. So um, the next consideration is, is, is people's ability to focus. Um, if someone came in here and said, hey, Mike, you usually talk for about... 30, 33 minutes, 35 minutes. I can only pay attention. My attention span is only 11 minutes long. So, so for the weaker vessel, I should then cut our time to 11 minutes, right? But how am I going to get this chapter in in 11 minutes? And, and then someone else comes in and they say, well, 11 is great, but I pay attention more like five minutes. And now, now because the weaker vessel is king, I have to try to worship Jesus and teach this thing and equip the saints, all things God told me to do in, in five minutes. Well, these things, they spiral into absurdity real quick. Because check this out. Um, in t- the year 2000, the average attention span of human was 12 seconds. In 2020, it's 8 seconds. A goldfish is 9 seconds. And so, so if weaker vessel is keen, someone could come to me and say, listen, the fact that you're making people pay attention more than 8 seconds, you're treating them like animals. You're sinning. You're treating people like animals. Well, but the weaker vessel is not keen. Jesus is king. So I'm going to do my best to make sure people can track with me and, and, and learn this thing, this Bible, and how to live out our faith. Um, but the weaker vessel is not king of our worship. Does that make sense? Cool. All right. And then the last thing would be when it comes to songs. Um, if someone came and said that, Mike, just the singing gives me a headache. It's mostly because I can hear your voice. Uh, I get it. I'm sorry. I'm not good. All right. I'm not good at all. I'll try to have Trevor turn it up a little bit. That's only making it worse. Now I have a worse headache. Can we just cut the singing out? We can't. We can't. If you don't like the singing, you're welcome to show up about, you know, quarter after. We'll make these exceptions. You can even leave before the last song. Uh, but, but we're not going to change this sacred thing of worship for the sake of the weaker vessels. Does that make sense? Are y'all, is everybody with me on that? I hope so. Um, we we want to be considerate of individuals. We do. Um, but, but, but church worship, this is something we participate in, but it doesn't belong to us. This is, this is his worship, right? And we, we're going to participate in the ways he's, he said to do it. Um, and that means, that means what we're doing. We're going to leave room for people. All right? So gospel faith produces a high regard for the good of others. There is one king when it comes to our worship, and that's Jesus. Let's keep reading. 18 and 19. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual edification. That word there is is building up. Let us pursue the building up of others. That's very, very difficult. I get pursuing life and liberty and happiness. I can do that. I can pursue freedom. I can pursue some me time. I can, I can pursue the weekend. But pursuing the good of others is hard work. Uh, and just so everyone knows, man, following Jesus, it, it's going to cause you to have to do some things that are very unnatural. Pursuing the good of others is one of them. Um, the first shall be last. Jesus said to do that. Dying to self. We're to take up our cross. These are all unnatural, hard things that Jesus says. If you're following me, these are the things you're going to do. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This cross, we we look at a cross because that's what killed Jesus. That's a silly symbol of our faith. Except if he hadn't died, I would still be in my sin. So we look to this thing, this foolishness. We look to the cross. And so 
we, we're going to be foolish and looking to that. We're going to be foolish and letting someone else go first. We're going to be foolish in taking up our cross, denying self, and following him. We're going to pursue the building up of others. Uh, gospel faith produces a high regard for others. Look for ways to build others up. All right, 20 and 21. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. All right, this is the word stumbling block, and I remember this from, uh, from Greek class. For some reason, it just stuck in my head. Stumbling block is the word scandalone. It, uh, it's... Uh, it's the, the word we get scandal from, um, and it's a, it's a scandal, he says, to continue in your freedoms that cause someone else to stumble. It, there's a sense where it's, it's like a bear trap. It's like a bear trap. It's you doing this thing that you're free to do. It is not sin for you to do that thing, um, but it's, it's this bear trap that someone else steps in. And, and when someone steps in a bear trap, they get hurt and they get tethered. They get stuck. They can't move forward. And, and, and so it's a, it's a scandal for Christians to to go around with saying, these are things I'm free to do, and if you don't like it, watch out for the bear trap, right? Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's like we're Hulk Hogan. We're, we're out there, we're flexing these muscles we have. We're like the Hulkster just flexing away. There he is, he's like 55 there, all right? He's got muscles where, where people shouldn't have muscles, and no one's better at flexing muscles than the Hulkster. Um, and that's what we look like. When we say, look at me doing this, and it's not a sin. And look me, I'm doing this over here, and it's not a sin. And this isn't a sin either, and I enjoy doing this thing that is not a sin that you don't like as well. And so it's a scandalone, guys. We, we have to watch it. It's, it's a bear trap. Um, and we, want, we shouldn't go around flexing our freedoms. Um, can, can we still enjoy them? I, I, I sure hope so. Um, as long as we're not setting out those bear traps and we're not showing everybody, look at all these awesome things I can do that you don't like because you think they're sin, even though the Bible says they're not. That's, that's, a, that's a poor attitude. Um, gospel faith produces a high regard for the good of others. Do not flex or flaunt your freedoms. That's not something we should do as believers. And then the last one, y'all hang with me. We're almost done. 22 and 23. So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed are the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if they, eat, if they eat, because their eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. So this is tough, because it's this hard balancing act. Because, because we have to, one, have these convictions, right? We talked about that. And then, and then, but, but in your convictions, don't require others to do that. Um, and, then, and then if you have a freedom that you want to do, you can, you're freely free to do that. Don't cause someone to stumble. And also, don't do those things that you're free from conscience to do. So, man, the best way I can help you guys, I guess I can share how I did this wrong. All right? So, 20-year-old Mike, I was in college, met my brother in Canyon, him and his friend. We were going to drive down to Harlech, down to South Texas. Um, in my car, my Ford Escort, it would have taken us 14 hours. Um, in this guy's car, we could, we could go 65, and so it took us 13 hours, right? Um, we did that whole long drive. Well, well he, he, we took turns driving. It's 13 hours, right? We're all taking turns, rotating in and out. Uh, and, and this guy, he gets out, and he goes to the passenger seat. My little brother's driving. I'm in the back seat. My little brother goes to pull off, right? And he says, hey, man, go ahead and buckle up. And this dude says, uh, he says I, don't feel, I don't feel conviction to buckle up, so I'm not going to. My brother says, uh, I don't care. It's the law. Buckle up. And, and uh, he says, no, 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 listen. The Holy Spirit would speak to me if I were sinning. He would tell me this is, a, this is wrong, and he's not speaking, so I'm going to not buckle up. Uh, plus, it's, it's my car. And so I'm in the back seat, and I, I scooch up, and I'm like, let me make sure I understand this. If you're not convicted that it's wrong, it does, it's no longer wrong? He's like, yeah, the Holy Spirit would convict me. I'm a believer. He would speak to me. I said, so, so does that work for me? If I don't feel like it's wrong, it's, it's not wrong? He said, yeah. So faster than this guy could blink, I went ahead and put him in a sleeper hole. Uh, and I said, I, I'm not convicted that this is wrong. And he was like, what? I said, in fact, I can flex right now with zero conviction, and, and I know what it's doing. You're having a hard time breathing. 
yes, yes, back home, yeah, go. My brother's trying to drive, right? And so we're, we hadn't gotten up to the full 65 yet. And I said, if your way of thinking is right, then, then I'm okay. Because I'm not convicted one bit that this is wrong. In fact, my plan is for when you to fall asleep from this chokehold, I'm going to buckle you up. And then I'm good, you know? And he said, let go, let go. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. All right, so, so on one hand, you guys see I did wrong, right? That, that wasn't right. His way of thinking was wrong as well, and it led to my actions, so I can blame him if I wanted to. But no, I don't. No, that was the wrong way to work this out. Um, and that's the problem, just so you know. A lot of times we got to stub our toe as we're walking, and this isn't right. And this, that was close to right, it was, and I'll, I'll get it right next time. And that's why we need each other. That's why we need each other to say, no, 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 no. Hey, listen, how about, how about this, Mike? Mike, instead of choking somebody out, how about you have a conversation? How about you open your Bible? And so, so when it comes to these disputable matters the Bible talks about, it's, it's clear they're there. They're in here. Here's how I try to do it. I try to have a moment where I'll teach on it, and then, and then I'll talk about it, and then, and, then, and then I'll put the ball in their court. So I was at a small church um, in... Uh, out in uh, in Texas, in uh, North Texas, wherever, and uh, and we started a small group ministry, and uh, and this one guy, his group was they were known as the fun group. They were young, young. He, I was probably 25, so he had to be 22, 23, and and that's how we got people to come. Hey, come to our group. Ours is the fun group. All right, um, and they did their three to five minute Bible study, and then they ate, and they chatted, and they hung out. Well, what happened is a couple of those guys, they, the men, they they made their way outside. Um, and they got to talking, and, 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 and they opened a cold brew. A couple of them had a cold one, um, an alcoholic adult beverage, right? So let me say this. They weren't sinning, all right? They, they, they did no sin. Uh, but there was a boy there, a youth that was there, whose daddy was an alcoholic. Um, and because they didn't teach that having, having a cold one as an adult isn't sin, all he knew was the abuse of that drink. Does that make sense? And so then I had to have a hard conversation. This is, you didn't, you're causing him to stumble. You put this bear trap out, and he's stuck in it. And as a youth pastor, i got to help this teenager through this. Can you help me? Can you do these things? And so, so what, what I have done is, is just what I said there, is, is, is I'm going to talk about it. Hey, listen, did you know there's a way to drink alcohol that isn't sin? You didn't. No, you wouldn't know that. Your dad has these issues. And so I'm going to talk about whatever these gray things are, these disputable matters. I want to talk about it. I want to teach what the Bible says. It's clear. I'm not going to put things in stone that aren't in stone. And then what I do is I put it on them. And I say, hey, ball's in your court. Do you mind if I have this drink or not? Do you mind if I do this thing? Whatever it is, do you mind if I do that or not? And, and if, if they say no, then, then it's clear that, man, they're, they're the weaker vessel and they need to be considered, and I need to not do that. Um, if they say yes, then cool, I'm the weaker vessel, and I hand me my drink. Does that make sense? Um, and, and so uh, James 4.17 4, uh, says, The man who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it sins. And so, again, this is going to be a tough balancing act we're going to have to do. Here's your takeaways for everybody. One, have convictions. Convictions only come from a, a relationship with Jesus. So if you don't know that you know that you know Jesus, man, I'm going to be in the back during this last song. I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, I've, I've helped all kinds from, from four and five years old to way older than that, some gray hairs like me, um, start their walk with Jesus. You can't have these convictions if you're not in relationship with Jesus. Two is live out those convictions. If, if for you or for me, wearing a dragon shirt is sin, then I need to not wear a dragon shirt, if that makes sense. Um, don't force your convictions on others, build others up, and don't flex your freedoms. Gospel faith produces a high regard for the good of others. We're going to sing one last song. If you need to talk, I'll be in the back. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this day, for this time, for these people. I pray, God, that we would, uh, we would all love and follow you. Amen. Let's stand and we'll sing one last song, guys.